Now, I know I've been tied a lot of messy flies lately, and that's not really by design. I'll just be flipping through a book and see a pattern that I want to tie, and it looks like it's going to catch fish and be easy to tie, and I say, let's go for it. So I got a request this week from Mr. Dad's 777. He asked for some more Western flies. So I broke out Scott Sanchez's book, A New Generation of Trout Flies. Now it's a great book. I reviewed it earlier in the year. I'll link to that one at the end of this video in case you're interested in taking a look at it. Now today's pattern, Sanchez calls it his speed stimulator. And he says he's fished with Randall Coffin, you know, the creator of the original stimulator, and says this thing is just a oh, cross between an elk hair caddis and a stimulator. And it can be fished on a dead drift or twitched and skittered. And the thing has a snowshoe hare's foot for a wing, so you know it's going to float like a cork. And I can see this being a great pattern in fast-moving, riffled water, certainly as an indicator because you know it's going to hold up a pretty beefy nymph. So, full disclosure, I've never fished this thing, never even tied it until today, but it's an easy tie and I think it's a great looking pattern. I can't wait to give it a try here in Maryland. So there it is in the vise, Scott Sanchez's Speed Stimulator. Now nothing beautiful about this fly, but oh man, I'm really digging it. Now I'm going to tie it on a 12. This is a barbless one extra long dry fly hook. And I'm going to use a tan thread. I'm sure black would be just fine right here. So let's go ahead and catch this on, bring it down to the start of the bend. And the first thing we're going to catch on, some grizzly dry fly hackle. And I'm going to try to catch it on with the concave side toward the, the hook. And if I can keep it that way, maybe these barbs won't be pointing forward when I wrap it. It's not often the case, but we'll give it a shot. So I'm going to keep that stem in to about two thirds of the length of the body. We'll snip this snub stub off right there. Take my thread back put some wax and dubbing on it. And Sanchez used a synthetic hair's ear. I don't even know what that is. So I'm gonna go with a synthetic something or another in a natural color. And we're only gonna dub to, you know, right there where we wrap that thread, maybe two thirds. So a two inch noodle is probably gonna work for you. I think that'll be fine. Now let's go ahead and palmer this up. Not real close together, but you know, kind of close together. Maybe four wraps up there to our thread. Now when you catch this off, try to keep the, the feather coming off the bottom of the hook, your excess. And really, I just learned that by tying the last one. It'll keep it out of your way for this next step, which is, you know, trimming this top and then our wing. And our wing is just a small tuft of this snowshoe hare's foot, which is about the most buoyant stuff in the world. And it doesn't really take much. We're gonna try and catch this in to about the bend of the hook. But before I do this, I'm gonna go ahead and clockwise spin my thread to really cord it up so I can just bind this in really tightly. So let's go about right there. Try to hold that feather out of your way. You can see what I was talking about, keeping it on the bottom of the hook. Okay, I think our length is gonna be fine right there. I'm gonna tighten my thread up again and just put a few more wraps going forward, then snip this excess up front. Now you might not get it all, so we'll Put a few wraps right here just to try to clean it up a little bit before we put some more wax and dubbing on. And this time maybe just a little bit less but it's okay if the, the thorax is a little bit bigger than the body. I think that's probably a not a bad thing at all. Now you want to wrap this one up, palmer it again and put these a little bit closer together, maybe four or five wraps just up here at the head. Now before I snip that off, I'm gonna push everything back, make a little room for my whip finish. Now let's take care of this excess feather right here. 
And for cleanup, I wouldn't worry about it at all. I think if you cleaned it up, you'd you know, mess with the effectiveness of it. Maybe if you've got some hair sticking forward that might clog up your eye, go ahead and take care of those. But I really don't. I think this is fine. And I think this is a pretty cool, decent looking fishable fly. So I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.